Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. In just 19 days time, the National Hockey League shall finally take to the ice after its shortest off-season ever and drop the puck on the 21-22 season. Before October 12th rolls around though, every NHL team will have completed their respective pre-season schedules, which includes training camp and various exhibition games, in order to get their players into game shape and finalise their rosters for opening night. In fact, many teams have already gotten their training camps well underway at the time of this recording, with the rest of the league set to follow suit over the next few days. Though each training camp is predominantly filled with full-time NHLers or promising young prospects within the organisation, there are a number of league veterans who will be attending camp on a professional tryout contract. These deals, known as PTOs for short, typically last a few weeks and give teams the chance to trial a player on their roster to see if they have what it takes to earn a contract for the upcoming season. While these deals are usually signed by players who are on their way out of the league or who have produced several disappointing seasons in a row, they enable players to showcase their talents both to the team that signed them during training camp and to other franchises around the league during preseason games, while also letting them prove whether they still have gas left in the tank at the NHL level. That said, most PTOs don't have a happy ending, as of the 436 PTOs that were handed out between 2015 and 2020, just 67 of them turned into a full season contract with an NHL team. That's only 15% folks. With 27 players having already signed a PTO for this year's training camp at the time of this recording, it's likely that only a handful of these hopefuls will go on to sign an NHL contract, if any at all. That said, there have been many examples over the years of players who began the year on a PTO, earned a full-time contract out of training camp, and surpassed all expectations in the months that followed. So in today's video, let's take a look at some of the best examples, shall we, as we explore the greatest professional tryout contracts in NHL history. We'll start with a textbook example of a player rebounding in a big way while on a PTO. So let us begin with Mason Raymond. After spending the lockout-shortened 12-13 season with the Vancouver Canucks, and after scoring 22 points in 46 games with the team that year, the former second-round draft pick was left unsigned by Vancouver for the upcoming season of play. Upon leaving the team that had drafted him seven years prior, and having entered free agency as a UFA for the very first time, Raymond wouldn't fare much better on the open market, as he was unable to secure a contract elsewhere in the league since no other NHL team decided to sign him. Having waited patiently for several months but to no avail, Raymond realised that he would have to take anything that he could get, which resulted in him signing a PTO contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs in September of 2013. Having made the move to Ontario, Raymond was out to prove that he could still be an effective player at the NHL level, and prove it he did. Thanks to his performance during training camp and his play during preseason, Raymond earned himself a one-year, $1 million contract with the Leafs on September 23rd, 2013. From there, Raymond would bounce back in a very big way, as he scored an impressive 19 goals and 45 points in 82 games while playing in the top six forward core of a rebuilding Toronto team. Not only would he double his production compared to the year prior, Mason Raymond's numbers during his debut year with the Leafs would be his best totals in the last four years and the second highest numbers of his entire NHL career. Not bad for a guy who wasn't signed until training camp, eh folks? If all of that wasn't impressive enough though, Raymond's bounce back season would help him secure a three year, $9.45 million contract with the Calgary Flames once his deal with Toronto expired on July 1st, 2014. I mean, he only scored 28 points in 86 games with Calgary in the season and a half that he played with the team, and the contract was eventually bought out on June 30th, 2016, but it's still a pretty good performance for a guy who had to claw his way back into the league just a few years prior, right guys? While we're discussing the mid-2010s NHL, let's shift our attention to another player who produced one hell of a resurgent season while on a PTO just two years after Raymond by the name of Lee Stepniak. Having scored 28 points in 71 games during the 14-15 season, split between the New York Rangers and the Winnipeg Jets, on September 16th, 2015, Stepniak signed a PTO contract with the New Jersey Devils. After impressing the Devils coaching staff during training camp, the former fifth round draft pick ended up signing a one year contract worth $850,000 with New Jersey on October 3rd. 
Though he had been signed to close to league minimum and was only asked to produce modest numbers as a middle six forward, the 32-year-old would surpass all expectations. Spending most of the year in the Devils' top six, Stepniak would hit the ground running and quickly become one of the most productive players on New Jersey's roster, as he registered a whopping 16 goals and 41 points in the first 63 games of the 15-16 season. This production would prompt the rebuilding Devils to sell high on their surprising star and acquire assets for the future, as Stepniak was traded to the Boston Bruins at the 2016 trade deadline in exchange for a 2017 second round pick and a 2016 fourth round pick. From there, the 32-year-old would spend the rest of the year in Boston and score 10 points in 19 games with his new team, bringing his full season totals to 19 goals and 51 points in 82 games. Not only would these numbers be his best single season production since his sophomore year in the league nearly a decade prior, they would also earn Stepniak a two year, $5 million contract with the Carolina Hurricanes on July 1st, 2016, in order to join the team for the following 16 17 season. Not bad for a guy who had to fight for his place in the league just a season before, eh, folks? Speaking of the 16-17 season, next up we have a player who not only used his PTO to secure himself an NHL contract, he ended up signing that contract with his tryout team's bitter rival, and his name was Chris Versteeg. After splitting the 15-16 NHL season between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Los Angeles Kings, and after scoring 38 points in 77 total games that year, the Steag signed a PTO contract with the Edmonton Oilers on September 9th, 2016, after he was unable to find a contract in the league for the upcoming year. Thanks to his strong preseason performance, the Stanley Cup champion had earned himself a one-year deal with Edmonton in order to stick around for the season. However, the 30-year-old forward had other plans, as on October 11th, 2016, it was revealed that Versteeg had signed with Edmonton's bitter rival, the Calgary Flames, to a one-year contract worth $900,000. Having made the move across the province, Versteeg would waste little time making the Oilers regret not signing him sooner, as he scored 15 goals and 37 points in 69 games with the Flames during the 16-17 NHL season. While this production would be his best single season numbers since the 11-12 season half a decade ago, the Steeg's bounce back year would also help him earn a one year extension with Calgary, this time worth $1.75 million. Sure, his sophomore season with the Flames wasn't nearly as successful as his first, but the Steeg's play during his PTO had extended his NHL career by another two years, helped him produce a resurgent season, and added a decent chunk of change to his bank account, so he certainly could have done a lot worse for himself, you know? But Odd Man Rush, what about the PTOs before the 2010s? Well, let's shift our attention a little further back then and take a look at one of the most successful PTOs in league history, which belonged to Maxim Afanagenov. Having been sidelined with a groin injury for much of the 08-09 NHL season, and having seen his point production gradually decline over the last few seasons, Maxim Afanagenov would leave the Buffalo Sabres behind after a decade within the organization and look for a change of scenery elsewhere in the league. Unfortunately though, this fresh start would have to be earned, as he signed a PTO contract with the Atlanta Thrashers on September 17th, 2009. Less than two weeks later on September 29th, the 29-year-old forward had secured himself a contract with the team, as he signed a one-year deal worth $800,000 with the Thrashers. From there, Afanagenov would suit up for Atlanta for the first time and quickly return to his strong play of years past. Spending most of the year on the Thrashers' top line, Afinagenov would finish the season second in scoring on Atlanta's roster, thanks to potting an incredible 24 goals and 61 points in 82 games, the most goals and the second most points of his entire NHL career. Despite this standout season, Afinagenov became one of the only players in this video to leave the NHL behind after his rebound year. Once his season with Atlanta had concluded, Afanagenov decided to take his talents to Russia and continue his career back home, as he signed a five-year contract with the KHL's SKA St. Petersburg for the 09-10 season. In fact, Afanagenov would end up spending the rest of his career in the K, as he went on to play 10 seasons in the league, split between three different teams, and scored 232 points in 415 KHL games. 
Considering he could have easily secured himself a sizable contract in the NHL after his year with the Thrashers, this guy must have really wanted to return home, because he left a lot of money on the table in order to do so. So we've talked about a player that left the league after his PTO season, let's take a look at a player who used his PTO to make a return to the NHL, as next we'll look at Peter Sakura. After spending the 10-11 season over in Europe, split between HC Poulsen of the Czech Extraliga and Dinamo Minsk of the KHL, on September 12th, 2011, Sakura signed a PTO contract with the New Jersey Devils, the team he broke into the league with back in 1995 and whom he had played the first seven years of his NHL career with. Though he hadn't played a full NHL season in two whole years, the 35-year-old was able to earn a one-year contract worth $650,000 out of training camp and suit up on New Jersey's opening night roster for the 11-12 NHL season. Despite having not played for the team in almost a decade, the 18th overall pick of the 1995 draft would produce quite the resurgence for his former franchise. Reuniting with former teammate and longtime Devil superstar Patrick Eliash, Sakura would go on to score an impressive 21 goals and 44 points in 82 games, good enough for sixth in scoring on the Devils roster that year. Not only that, Sakura's five points in 18 games during the 2012 playoffs would help New Jersey make it all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, before they were ultimately defeated by the Los Angeles Kings in six games. Ah, but it's all good though. Sakura had already won the Cup twice in his career at that point, so he could wipe his tears away with his pair of championship rings. Sticking with the early 2010s, let's now look at a player who ended up earning several NHL contracts after multiple strong PTO performances, by the name of Brad Boys. Having spent the lockout shortened 12-13 season with the New York Islanders, and having scored 35 points in 48 games while playing on the Islanders' top line, Boys was surprisingly unable to secure himself a contract for the following 13-14 NHL season. That said, he did receive a pair of PTOs, one from the Islanders and one from the Florida Panthers. Instead of spending another year on Long Island, Boys elected to join the Panthers, who eventually signed him to a one-year, $1 million contract on September 28th, 2013, after a strong training camp with the side. Once he had made the move to Florida, Boys would suit up with the Panthers for the first time and produce similar numbers to his previous year in the league, as he scored an impressive 21 goals and 36 points in 78 regular season games, good enough for first in goals and fourth in scoring on the entire Panthers roster. Not bad for a guy earning a million dollars that year, eh folks? This performance would also earn Boys a two-year, $5.25 million contract extension with the Panthers, but it would end up being bought out just a year into the deal. This would prompt Boys to sign a second PTO, this time with the Toronto Maple Leafs, on September 10th, 2015, and after impressing the team that originally drafted him back in 2000, he earned a one-year deal worth $700,000 with the team. From there, Boys would earn every penny of his new deal, as he finished the 15-16 NHL season ninth in scoring on the Maple Leafs roster, thanks to his 9 goals and 24 points in 60 games. Not the greatest numbers of course, but considering he played limited minutes for a Toronto side that finished dead last in the NHL that year, you could argue that he did the best that he could given the circumstances. Speaking of the 15-16 season, next up we have a player who not only surpassed all expectations after signing his PTO, he also helped his team secure a key roster piece for many years after his contract was over. And that player was Thomas Fleischmann. After spending the prior 14-15 NHL season split between the Florida Panthers and the Anaheim Ducks, and after scoring 28 points in 66 games that year, Fleischmann was unable to find a home in the league once free agency began. After signing a PTO with the Montreal Canadiens on September 12th, 2015, and after earning a one-year, $750,000 contract with the team less than a month later on October 4th, the former second-round draft pick would make himself at home with the original six franchise. Having scored a respectable 10 goals and 20 points for the Habs in the first 57 games of the year, at the 2016 NHL trade deadline, Fleischmann was traded to the Chicago Blackhawks, along with Dale Weiss, in exchange for a 2017 second round draft pick and forward Philip Deneau. 
And how did this trade pan out? Well, considering Fleischmann scored just 5 points in 23 total games with Chicago, as the Blackhawks failed to clinch their second straight championship and their fourth cup in six years, and considering Montreal picked up a player who ended up spending half a decade with the team, became one of the best defensive centres in the entire NHL, and who just led the Habs to the Stanley Cup Finals, I think Montreal did pretty well for themselves, don't you? While we're still on the subject of the 15-16 season, I have another player who signed a PTO that year who may not have lit the league on fire, but his tryout led to him producing a long and successful tenure with the team that trialled him, by the name of Scotty Upshaw. Having spent the 14-15 season with the Florida Panthers, and having scored 15 points in 63 games for his efforts, Upshaw signed a PTO contract with the St. Louis Blues on September 11th, 2015, after he was unable to secure a contract for the upcoming 15-16 NHL season. Thanks to his performance during training camp and his play during preseason, Upshaw earned himself a one-year contract worth $700,000 with the team less than a month later on October 5th. From there, Upshaw would end up spending that year, as well as the following two seasons as a member of the Blues, where he scored 23 goals and 51 points in 206 regular season games in the process. Sure, he wasn't the most productive player to earn a contract from a PTO, but given the role he played on a roster, and how effective he was in that role, and given how long he ended up staying with the team after his initial deal had ended, he more than made up for his lack of point scoring if you ask me. Next up, we have a player who found himself on a PTO just a few months after lifting the Stanley Cup, but produced a career year for himself as a line mate to one of the best players in the game today, and that was Alex Chason. After earning a contract with the Washington Capitals from a PTO from the 17-18 season, and after helping the team clinch the 2018 Stanley Cup Championship, Chason would find himself on the outside looking in once again, as he signed a PTO with the Edmonton Oilers on September 10th, 2018. Once he had earned a one-year contract worth $650,000 with the Oilers out of training camp less than a month later on October 2nd, the former second-round draft pick would end up producing the greatest season of his entire pro career. Spending much of the year on the Oilers' first line, alongside league superstar and generational talent Connor McDavid, Chason went on to score an impressive 22 goals and 38 points in 73 regular season games, good enough for fourth in goals and fifth in scoring on the Oilers' roster. Not only would these numbers be the most goals and points of his entire NHL career by far, Chason's breakout year would also earn him a two-year, $4.3 million contract with Edmonton on July 1st, 2019. Sure, Chason wouldn't come close to his 18-19 scoring numbers in either of the following two seasons, but his performance while on a PTO helped him to re-establish himself as a legitimate roster player in the best league in the world and extend his NHL career by a few seasons while getting paid handsomely in the process. I guess playing with McDavid has even more benefits than we thought, eh folks? Penultimately, let's take a look at the best PTO from the most recent season of play, belonging to Mike Hoffman. Having scored 29 goals and 59 points in 69 games with the Florida Panthers during the 2019-20 NHL season, and with the league cancelling its season prematurely due to the pandemic, Hoffman was in need of a new contract for when the league eventually decided to return to play. Though he was more than deserving of a multi-million dollar deal thanks to his consistently strong play over the years, the flat salary cap and the need for teams to save money any way they could meant that Hoffman was forced to earn a deal, as he signed a PTO with the St. Louis Blues on December 27th, 2020. Hey, happy Christmas, Hoffman! After a successful training camp with the team, the former fifth-round draft pick secured himself a one-year contract worth $4 million with the Blues on January 11th, 2021. And who said players on a PTO couldn't get paid? From there, Hoffman would suit up for St. Louis for the first time and produce decent scoring numbers during the shortened season, as he potted 17 goals and 36 points in 52 games. Despite these totals being his lowest single season production since joining the league full time back in 2014, considering he scored at roughly a 23 goal, 49 point pace over a full season of play, and given that he was brought onto the team via a PTO, he certainly could have done a lot worse for himself, and that's not even including the massive contract he signed with the Habs a few months ago. 
And finally, let's turn back the clock several decades now and take a look at a league legend and Hall of Famer who used his PTO contract to come out of early retirement by the name of Guy Lafleur. After a 14-year career with the Montreal Canadiens between 1971 and 1984, in which he scored 1,246 points in just 961 regular season games, and after winning three Art Ross trophies, two Hart Memorials, a Conn Smythe, and five Stanley Cup championships, Guy Lafleur called it a day on his career in November of 1984 at the age of 33, where he had his iconic number 10 retired by the Habs even before the 84-85 season had concluded, and he was inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1988. Just a few months after his induction though, the former first overall draft pick decided to come out of retirement and attempt a return to the NHL, as he signed a PTO contract with the New York Rangers on August 19th, 1988. Though he hadn't suited up in the league in nearly three years, Lafleur quickly showed the Rangers that he could still compete at a very high level, as he earned a one-year contract with the team before opening night. From there, the 36-year-old forward wasted little time proving that he still had it, as he went on to score 18 goals and 45 points in 67 games during the 88-89 NHL season. Sure, these numbers weren't even close to his career highs, but given that he had retired from the league nearly three years prior, and he hadn't played a single pro hockey game since, Lafleur put up some pretty respectable numbers for himself. Not only would his PTO rebound help him make his triumphant return to the league, Lafleur would end up playing several more seasons in the NHL after his year on Broadway, as he followed Rangers head coach Michel Bergeron to the Quebec Nordiques for the following 89-90 season, and played the final two years of his career there before hanging up his skates for good in 1991. It just goes to show you that if the all-time leading scorer in Montreal Canadiens history needed to earn his place in the league on a PTO, then everyone else who has done so has achieved something pretty impressive. And that was a look at the greatest PTO contracts in NHL history. What do you guys think about these bounce back performances? Do you think they should have been on a PTO in the first place, or did I leave someone completely obvious out? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye! A big thank you to Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, Saeed, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.